we get to play with this thing and take it wherever we want. We have a third eye, the pineal gland in the center of our head, which is made of rods and cones, the same kind of cells that our two physical eyes are made of. This eye is supposed to open, but it won't open as long as we have an instability underneath it because we wouldn't know how to perceive what we were perceiving. We wouldn't have the circuits in place to translate it into rational information based on the reality that we are in right now. Everything is energy and we are here to learn how to master the flow of energy through our life experience. Hi everyone, welcome back. I'm Michael Sandler, your host on Inspire Nation. If you've ever wanted to awaken your spirit and live your best life, then do we have the Energy Codes show for you. Today I'll be talking with Dr. Sue Mortar, international speaker, master of bioenergetic medicine, quantum field visionary, and the author of a brilliant new book, The Energy Codes. And that's just what I want to talk with her about today, about a seven-step system to awaken your spirit, heal your body, and live your best life. That plus we'll talk about the dangers of goop, glowing hands and tadpoles, Buddha Parthi and Sai Baba, root locks and squeezing the heart, trapdoors and BEST, who in the world is the clover lady, and what in the world jellyfish and emotions have to do with anything. So welcome to the show, Sue. Are you ready to shine? <laughs> More than ready. Absolutely. I can't wait to see where we get to go today. Woohoo! <laughs> All right. So we're going to dive a little bit into your story. Then we're going to talk about these seven different energy codes. But before we do that, what's one thing we can do right now in this moment to begin to reconnect with who we truly are? Hmm. One of the things that happens uh, inadvertently and unknowingly is that we tend to disperse our energy out into the world. Our senses are directed externally. We're always checking to see, do I fit in? Am I doing the right thing? Is this appropriate? Is this popular? Is this the da-da-da? And our, our senses have been externally oriented since day one, basically, when we landed here and we kind of splatted. And we'll talk more about that later. Uh, so the uh, first thing that I would suggest is that everyone just gather your energy, just call it back home, come back on to the self. It's called subject versus your energy being on object and pull it back onto the self, onto subject and just play with that for a moment. Right now, just disperse your energy out into the room or onto the computer screen or onto some thought that you have or what happens to you when someone who pushes your buttons walks into the room. Notice how your energy just scatters and then to pull it back home, to claim it, and to start breathing in your belly automatically begins to cultivate this energy back here in the essential self versus being dispersed out into our performing or protective personality or the false self. Some call it the ego, mm -hmm. but I don't call it the ego because nobody likes to have an ego, but people don't seem to mind having a protective personality. Uh, so I call it that and we can get some amazing work done uh, in the meantime. So come back onto the self. I love it. I love it. I love it. And if you live in a household, probably with small dogs, definitely with kitty cats, you learn to do this exercise quite frequently. Or if your energy is, as my wife would call it, barfing out all over the place, your kitty cats will make you quite aware of this quite quickly. Ah, uh, so <laughs> exactly. Let's go from there. I want to dive into your story in your earliest years. But before that, let's actually go to the crux of the matter. What happened mid 30s? You're having kind of an existential dilemma. You're getting into meditation. You end up in a darkened ballroom full of meditators. Yes. I was claiming something for myself for the first time in my life rather than being a high performer and a pleaser and doing everything for everyone else to have the life experience that they want, which is good if you're a doctor, but not so good for the person underneath that. Yes. Uh, I was ready to claim something for myself. So it was a version of coming on to subject, like we just said, that I had never uh, witnessed or experienced before. I sat down in a ballroom with 300 other meditators and started chanting a chant that was, uh, that was extended, that was long, the tones were long, that they were holding. I wasn't used to breathing that slowly. I was focused on myself and staking a claim for myself like I had never done before. I was going to change my life. I was stressed enough for long enough and it was time for something to be different. So I dropped inside this meditation with everyone and I basically uh, had a transcendental, multidimensional experience where I awakened to the self that exists beyond the thinking, analytical, believing mind. 
I went out into a place that was far beyond what beliefs could hold. I had never imagined such an experience. I could see 360 degrees around me in a light so brilliantly bright. It was 10 times brighter than the brightest day in the desert that I had ever experienced. And uh, I could see in every direction, above, below, in front, behind, equally. And I was me, but I wasn't in a body. I was this ray of light that extended from this vast array of white, brilliant, bright light uh, down through this ray into the earth, which was about the size of a marble. It was uh, so far beneath where I was in this moment. And I knew that I had always been there. I knew that I would always be there. I was completely fulfilled and satiated. There was nothing missing, nothing broken, nothing to become, nowhere to go, nothing to achieve. And what was happening was light was compressing into the vibrational frequency that we call love as it was passing through this ray of light that I was. And I knew that this is who we all are. We are rays of consciousness and we are transmuting light into love. And we do so as we breathe, uh, we bring it here into this dimension. So to whatever degree we're willing to do that uh, allows light and love to be at the, at the foundation of our life experience. Woohoo! Yeah, now, it's pretty doesn't, amazing. Doesn't that flip everything on its head? Because you had grown up trying to be an over overachiever to protect yourself. And in a yeah. sense, like the rest of us, when we get into self-help, trying to fix ourselves. And in that yeah. moment, my guess is there was nothing to be fixed. Nothing broken. Nothing needed to be fixed. It was a realization that everyone needs to have in the course of their life. And, you know, that's the purpose of what I'm doing in the world is to show people how to access that deeper, true sense of self so that they're not on a continual process of searching. We're, we are what we're searching for. So it's pretty tough to find it unless we happen upon it. I'm going to pause you and I'm going to repeat that. We are what we are searching for. Tell me more. Yeah, it's behind the eyes. So these two eyes that are looking outward are looking for uh, achievement, they're looking for another degree, they're looking for information, they're looking for someone, salvation, fix me, heal me, show me what I need to do differently. And it's only the protective personality that is in that search. Here's what happens, Michael. We, we land here, we splat. It's a big, tough landing, you know. And, and splat and, uh, means we get amnesia, we forget who we are, <laughs> yeah, we're like, what happened? Yes. Exactly. It's like, what was that? Our mind goes one way, our body goes another, our breath goes another way. And in that dispersed splat of forgetting, we attach ourselves to the mind. We think that's who we are in whole and in complete. We know we have a body and we have a spirit that's going to go on to heaven someday. But in the meantime, we, are, we think we are this mind stuff that has to navigate and figure out how to make life work. But the mind is based in duality and it is based in fear because it is only a part of who we are. So it's based in incompleteness. We translate that sensation of incompleteness into the idea that there's something wrong with me. There's something missing. There's something I need to fix or what have you. And so what we have to do is get the mind to hook back into the body and connect it with the breath in such a fashion that we allow all of the parts of us to work together again, perhaps for the first time in this life. And so as it does, we start to have a sense of self. We have the sense of well-being. We, we have a sense of completeness that we never had before. But until we do that and are continuing to be attached and identified as the mind, we write stories, we do all kinds of things to try to fill in the blanks, fill in the gaps of this missing energy that we can perceive but we can't put our finger on. And so it's about stopping the train and dropping in and allowing all of our parts to work together again unify. That unity consciousness happens within. It's not about us connecting with other people. First things first, that will come later. First things first, when we connect mind, body, and breath together again and build the neurocircuitry to sustain it, the next thing you know, we're operating from a place of wholeness. And it's very easy to connect with others and see their wholeness when we're coming from that disposition ourselves. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Before we started, you were talking with me about ego. And you're saying, you know, pe some people may not like that word, or we all think about a big ego. And I think of my ego is a good friend who I want to integrate as part of the whole, a complete mm. and total me. Now, when you came back, um, I imagine you, you go from one holy crap moment to another, because now there is an integration that gets to take place. Um, and there is, 
you have a, a science, a scientific mind. Your dad was a, a, a brilliant doctor who created the BEST technique. We'll talk about that in a little bit. And you probably went to work, my guess is, tinkering. What just happened? How do I get there again? How do I teach it to other people? What were you doing? You bet. I wanted to reproduce that sensation. I wanted to reproduce that visual. I wanted to get back to that place uh, with everything that I had because it felt like something I had never felt before. It was a reality that I had no idea existed and I wanted that to be mine. And so as I did, I started trying to reproduce it. And of course, <laughs> when you're trying, you're not in the vibrational frequency of having. And so I would never get there. I would, I would try to reproduce this, that, or the other and focus and try to expand my mind into it. And when I would stop trying, it's when it would happen again. And so I realized, okay, there is less effort generates more, uh, more when it comes to this other realm. Mm -hmm. And I recognize that the vibrational frequency of, of the overthinking mind dials us out of the frequency where this true essence resides. And so uh, little by little, I put the pieces back together again, that it was about a, a soulful intention, a, a surrender of the mind, slowing the breath. Uh, having your attention deep in your core for you and for no other reason, not so that you could achieve anything. Because when it first happened, uh, it was comp it was not on my radar. It wasn't something I was trying for. I was just trying to to I was just interested in surrendering and feeling less stress. And so I then got caught up in the chant that was being chanted in that room that day and the breath that was happening that I had to concentrate on to keep up with these people and. The next thing I knew, boom, I was, I was in access, I was in touch with the true self, the soulful self, this higher self that we, that we speak of and that we know about. Uh, I didn't know much about it. I certainly didn't know what it looked like. I have an image that, that I have used, uh, cool. I might show this, that, that kind of demonstrates that there is an image here mm -hmm. at the top of this page which would kind of depict the, uh, the truth of who we are. And the image at the bottom of the page is who we think we are. But this image so at, at the, the bottom, top is is something, and it's something I've been describing to people as a meditation when they're going into heart and doing heart coherence. I want them to realize they are a sun, and you are showing, but basically a sun beaming yes. out light with a a halo, a rainbow halo all around it, and that's the true self. Yes, we are a light of consciousness. And then we project ourselves into an action. Mm -hmm. We project ourselves into an action which looks like a, a, a bright ray of light coming from that sun down into this earthly dimension, into the physical realm. So we're projecting ourselves into the physical realm. And at the bottom of the page, you see a human being standing there with a toric field, an energy field flowing around it. And it has to do with how we embody, how we come into this body, generate the body, uh, generate a body for ourselves to navigate this physical world. So the thing is, this, this light of consciousness at the top of the page, this big sun, is who we are. And this physical body is just what we're doing. We're just coming here with uh, the light of our consciousness. And our job is not enlightenment. Our job is embodiment. We already Thank are the you. light. So people seek enlightenment. And the reason they are they find it elusive is because they don't accept that that's who they already are. I had to accept that that version of this tremendous experience, this transcendental space, was the truth of who I was, and that this physical body version of me was a project that I was in. I had projected myself into this physical dimension. I didn't remember doing that, because when you continue to compress energy to get to the physical form, you come through a realm where... The, the vibrational frequency becomes so compressed, it's hard to remember the spaciousness that we really are. So uh, people are here on the planet uh, frustrated with trying to live here and feeling the incompleteness that we experience. And what we want them to realize is that you are this, this immense light of awareness, the pure aha, the revelation. You are that, and you are compressing yourself into a physical form. And and what happens for people while they're in the body is that they seek enlightenment. They seek to know more, to grasp more. And in our point earlier that we were saying, Michael, is that we already are that which we are seeking. And to experience our wholeness, all we have to do is come fully into the body, come all the way here. It's like we set out to come here. We got halfway here. We started experience the, experiencing the friction of coming into this dimension. We started freaking out at the, at the mind level. 
and we turn around and, and want to go back and escape out through through prayer or through meditation or what have you uh, alone. So so what we want to realize is that all we have to do is complete the journey. Just come all the way here. Be completely you here. Be in your authenticity. F find yourself in your physiology. Learn how to do that so that you can turn on the chemistries and the healing capacities of the body that happen when we are wholly, completely residing in it. We are the healer. And if we're not awake to that, the body, you know, seeks healing. So embodiment is actually the key. I like it. I'm picturing, I don't know why, a silvery spaceship, maybe from a cheap sci-fi movie. And we get to go in this amazing ship and we have a choice. We can go in the ship and go, I'm not here. I'm not here. I'm not here. I want to go home. I want to go home. I want to go home. Or we can look at all the buttons, the dials, the, the levers, and we get to play with this thing and take it wherever we want yes. during this if, lifetime. If only people would give themselves permission to do that. That's the key. We just, we think that because of this, this uh, we are plagued with this overriding sense, this overarching idea that there's an inadequacy, there's insufficiency, and we're busy trying to fit in or wondering if our ideas are worthy or if they're going to take or if it's, if it's value, uh, valuable enough that I can walk that. Uh, we get so caught up in that disposition that it doesn't occur to us that we already are the wholeness that we seek, that we have permission. Like, how would you feel in your system if permission had been granted for you to take this on as a grand adventure instead of something that you're trying to fit into and make work and survive? Yet rather, if you were completely creating your reality, as quantum science is showing us, that there are at least two, and never mind that there are billions, but there are at least two realities happening every second, every every moment in time. There's more than one reality, and we're at choice to decide which one we're going to, to, to climb into and navigate. Which dials on the buttons on the dashboard of this ship are we going to... Uh, to, to exercise. Your whole book, we're talking about duality, non-duality. We're talking about the tail side of the coin. We're talking about the head side of the coin. And we're talking about the flip that we can make in a moment. What's the quantum flip? And can we do that with our own perception of ourselves? Exactly. That's the point. So quantum, quantum flip is a term in quantum science that basically says that a particle can be measured moving two directions at the same time, which we think in our linear world is completely irrational. It's completely impossible. But the quantum reality is showing us that mm, it's true. So this can be true and this can be true. And actually they both are. Which one are you interested in navigating? Which one are you interested in generating? And by choosing, by using what we call our free will, by choosing which one we're going to pay attention to, we literally start creating particles, gathering particles together, these tiny energy packets, which ultimately compress enough to create physical form, physical matter. So we're making matter just by putting our attention on something. It looks like we're attracting things into our life, but we're actually formulating them as we're moving into the expansiveness of who we really are. So we're expressing out into and creating this physical experience as we go. So an old idea of who you were doesn't fit anymore when, you, when you've based your identity upon your past experiences. And of course, I feel this way because I've been through this situation. My life has been this way. It has rendered it, itself into creating this result that I call me. It's just not true. And, uh, and science is no longer allowing us to continue to think that way. Uh, it's, it's, it's actually irrational to think that cause and effect is the only reality that, uh, that we're swimming in right now. Thank you so much. I'm going to dive into the uh, energy codes in a minute. First, I'm going to go to a handful of truths here in creating your life, but I've got an image in my head. It's uh, They were formerly known as the Wachowski brothers, made the Matrix, end of the third movie. Neo has lost his sight, but he sees this golden light that is everything. And that's truth number one. Everything is energy. Mm, everything is energy. So we have a third eye the pineal gland in the center of our head, which is made of rods and cones, the same kind of cells that our two physical eyes are made of. This eye is supposed to open, but it won't open as long as we have an instability underneath it because we wouldn't know how to perceive what we were perceiving. We wouldn't have the circuits in place to translate it into rational information based on the reality that we are in right now. 
So everything is energy, and we are here to learn how to master the flow of energy through our life experience. We are energy. Everything is energy, including you, including me. Every single one of us is nothing more than compressed energy living here in this reality. So the whole idea is how do we learn to masterfully move the energy through our experience so that we're generating the movie on our movie screen that we want to traverse through, walk through, and experience. That's what the energy codes are all about. Excellent. And then truth number two, your life is a reflection of your energy, and this has to do with gunk. Yes, it has to do with gunk. So basically, this energy field is constantly um, vibrating at various different frequencies, and there's a frequency of the mind and a, fre- and a frequency of, of your uh, thoughts and your feeling tone body, mm-hmm. and there are other frequencies. Let me just toss this image up here. Beautiful. There, this this is an image, and I have scratched some things on here just to kind of demonstrate. It's a it's a physical body mm-hmm. with layers upon layers upon layers of energy surrounding it, yeah. and the outermost layers are these faint, uh, in, invisible energies that we that we would reference as pure spirit. And as they traverse and compress and compress and become more and more physical, they hit this bandwidth of energies that we would call our mind field, our ability to perceive and think and believe and and draw conclusions and navigate life the way that we're used to. Inward from there is a blue line that's called the feeling body. And this feeling body is, 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 as we become more and more material, this feeling body becomes our way of perceiving how energy is navigating, uh, how energy is moving. I just have to say, in case you saw that, I just had the most beautiful little bug land on the screen (laughs) and climb. As you're describing bodies, all Uh of a sudden we have this insect coming across the screen. <laughs> I saw something crawl across there. That's amazing. It that was, was kind of cool. <laughs> <laughs> and then there was a, there's another uh, layer of energy that, that, that is the bandwidth of energies that creates the chakra system, which we may be familiar with. And then it generates the nervous system and the cellular structures all the way down to physical. Our job is to come all the way here. We are this, this most uh, dispersed Um, subtle energy, and we're compressing ourselves all the way to the physical form. So when we say that our life is a reflection of our energy, if there is interference on the line, this is the gunk, Mm -hmm. this gunk right here are the, the etchings that I've drawn on here showing that if we have drawn a conclusion that this thing that happened in my life wasn't supposed to happen. They never should have fired me. They never should have left me. That accident that happened, you know, the, the person behind me that rear-ended me, sh- shouldn't have, shouldn't have, that shouldn't have happened, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. We put all this density on our field, and if we hold on to those grudges or we have this state of unforgiveness, it keeps this vibrational pathway blocked. So we can't come all the way in with the whole of our being. We can't ever get here all the way. So the cells inside here, we think about the term epigenetics and the fact that these vibratory frequencies are hitting the surface of the cells of our body. If the surface of the cells of our body are getting incomplete messages, they start to, um, they start to respond as if there's trouble as if there's a potential danger at hand. So they start producing the chemicals that would validate that or get us able to respond. So now we're living inside of a chemical environment that's based in fight or flight rather than based in creativity and genius is not accessible under those conditions. So the gunk has got to go, but it's not like we get rid of it. We have to embrace it, just like you were talking earlier, that the ego is something, this false self, this protective self, the gunk on the field has to be embraced and has to be burned up in the bonfire of our own loving presence so that it can be ashes to ashes, kind of taken back down to its basic elements and used for something more productive in our life. So every unforgiveness that we have is energy that is trapped that we could be using for healing and filtering and cleansing and detoxifying and coming up with creative uh, projects in our lives and fulfilling them. So it's all about turning it around. I just You just had something come into my consciousness that I had never thought about before, which is DNA as a bell or the cell is a bell and the DNA is the part that you ring. And if you don't have the gunk there, then your cell rings in a beautiful accord. And if you have the gunk, then no matter how beautiful your DNA, so to speak, it's going to be in discordance, out of accord until you get rid of that gunk. Absolutely. Perfectly put. 
Awesome. <laughs> it, this is exactly what we're doing is trying to up level the, the song that's coming out of this body. Yes. The sensational symphony that's supposed to be revealing from us is, is not able to happen if we're hitting, if the, if the, if it's out of tune, right? If we're hitting chords that are discordant and not allowing, uh, the true flow of our essential selves to reveal. I've just one more image here that Go I'd love to it. show. That, that is also helpful, I think, in this discussion, that this energy uh, that we're speaking about, it also pours down through our physical body from overhead. It traverses mm -hmm. down through the body, hits the earth, and then rises back up from the earth. The earth steps it down for what I call human consumption. Then it rises back up through the body, out mm -hmm. the top of the head, and cycles around the outside yes. of the body, and recycles and recycles and recycles. Now, if we have the circuitry in place to allow that without interruption, without insecurities and insufficiencies and beliefs, that are limiting us, it will rise higher and higher and higher and create a bigger energy field. And that's actually where the physical body comes from. It's a byproduct of this energy constantly recycling and becoming a body of energies that are here. So if you see in this other image uh, that down at the bottom here is that that energy that is rising, if it doesn't have the circuitry to rise properly, it has to go around where there is circuits and, and deflect and divert. And it creates a wobble in the uprising energy through your core system, which creates a distortion in the energy field. This results in this person standing inside this energy field and looking out through this distortion. It makes our movie that's on our movie screen that we're projecting on there so that we can see how we're doing it, building these circuits inside. It creates a distortion in the screen, which causes a reality that to us feels like we have to... Uh, change something. Something's not right. Something's not safe. And it's all because of a distortion that's on, on our projection because of the lack of circuitry inside our system to begin with. So, and creates things like dis-ease. Dis-ease, lack of ease. Yes. So, And that leads to physical breakdown as well. So yeah. let's go real quickly to the last, last few truths, and then I want to dive into these energy codes here. I want to talk about truth number three, you are the creator of your life, which we talked a little bit about before. You say, to increase awareness of our soulful self, we need to increase our awareness of our body and biofield. Yes. So the biofield is what we were just showing an image of, and it is this energy field that is actually creating the body. And it, for us to build the circuits to take the distortion out of that, it allows a, a more accurate projection onto the movie screen so that we're walking around in our own creation as we would have it be. Now, there are two things that contribute to that creation. It's our conscious mind and it's our subconscious. And they have to be in communication with each other. If there's a lack of communication between the conscious and the subconscious, we're thinking, I, I choose this, I, I dream this, I vision this for myself. I accept and allow this to be true. But if the trap door between the conscious and the subconscious has slammed shut, no matter how much our conscious mind is running this kind of a message, our subconscious, which is actually what drives our life and what actually manifests in our life is based upon the agreement between the conscious and the subconscious. It's our subconscious that runs our health and that actually projects our life out in front of us. Otherwise, we would all just decide to be healthy, wealthy, and living on a whatever, you know, an island with, a, with a, uh, an umbrella drink in our hands or what have you, and it would be poof, it would be happening. So if that's not happening, there's a reason for that. So what we're doing is teaching people how to open the trap door mm -hmm. so that what our conscious intentions are intending are received and agreed upon and accepted and interchanged with the impulses that are driving our bodies and driving our lives at the subconscious level. Just as an example, you don't have to consciously remember to digest lunch. Right? It happens automatically. You don't have to consciously keep your blood calcium levels where they need to be in order for your system to be alkaline enough to heal. That's trying to happen automatically, et cetera, et cetera. You don't have to remember to breathe or keep your heart beating. So, so we know that there's autopilot here that's really keeping us going, and we need to be in reverie to that. We need to be honoring it and allowing it, and, and the energy codes are teaching people how to open the trap door so that our conscious awareness of these things enhances their their natural ability to be self-healing and self-regulating and self-illuminating and self-referencing so that we can operate in this life as a creator and a, and a self-healer constantly. Woohoo! There's a bunch. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's go from there real quickly into uh, cosmic bus stops, and then we're going to dive into some en energy codes. So that'd be yeah. truth number four. Your creation, your life is always expanding. Yes, so... 
the moment that we think we know everything that's going on in our world, there's more to know, right? The moment that we think that, that we've, we've got our finger on the pulse of who we are and what's what, there's more to learn about us ourselves because everything is expanding. The universe is expanding. Consciousness is expanding. And so we are not we're better off to not identify as an individual who knows or does not know, but to identify as the awareness itself that's constantly seeking and adventuring and climbing into new ideas and trying them on for size and, 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 and engaging in the co-creation in a, in a constant fashion. That allows us to be available to what is happening. This cosmic bus stop is, is a, something that I speak about in the book because I want people to understand that there is nothing happening in your life that is bigger than you. There is nothing greater than what you can handle. In fact, you requested it before you even came in here. And by doing such, you knew that these specific sets of circumstances mm -hmm. coinciding through my experience are going to nudge me or elbow me or, or compress me or, or, whack me. Uh, <laughs> or whack me over like the cosmic two by four, whatever it takes to wake me up to the truth of who I am so that I stop defending my smallness that I stop believing that I'm less than and doing everything that I can do to validate that because the mind so wants to be right, it will even, it will even set forth to prove my inadequacy uh, if that's what it believes. So, so the bus stop conversation is like you know, we go to the bus stop to catch the bus to come to planet Earth, right, like you do. And while you're waiting at the bus stop, you ask other people what they're, what they're going in for, what they're going to experience. And someone asks you and you say, basically, uh, you know, I'm going, I'm just, I'm new here. I don't know. And somebody else sh chimes in and says, you know, I've been there before and I've had amazing experience just as I was leaving. And I'm going back to have that experience again. In fact, I'm going to have it bigger. And it was this thing they call forgiveness. And it happened inadvertently for me on my way out when I was too tired to hold my grudges. I just uh, let go. I, this thing they call let go. I did that. And, uh, and I had this most amazing experience, this revelation of the truth of who I was and how I'd been keeping, cutting myself short, selling myself short all that time prior. So this time I'm going back and I'm going to have a bigger experience of forgiveness uh, long before the last five minutes of my life. So uh, other people at the bus stop say, well, how are you going to do that? And, uh, and you basically say, I don't know. I guess somebody's going to have to do something that's nearly unforgivable. And then I'm going to live with the grudge of that and I'm going to feel the effects of that and the compression and the disease that comes from that and the, the lack and the, and the loss that comes with that from that focal point. And, uh, and I'm going to reach inside of myself and, and find a part of me that I didn't even know I had. And I'm going to pull it up and out and forgive this nearly unforgivable set of circumstances. And in the midst of that, I'm going to reveal this true magnificence that of, of who I really am and have that experience of myself for the rest of time on earth. So the bus stop conversation is basically the soulful contracts that we strike up so that we come here and we get it and we learn it and we wake up to it and we embrace the things that are challenging because we know they are serving the upliftment of our life experience rather than trying to take me out of the game. So it allows us to embrace that everything is energy and that it's all in my favor. And, and it means that, and if we get it, it goes right into truth number five, the purpose of your life is to discover your creatorship. It means that we realize we're playing at the level of alchemy. We're playing at the level of energy. We are the creator rather than stuck in this small story. And we get that it is all God, all good, all universe, all energy, all love, all here to serve us. And it's all us. It's, it's not even separate from me. It's who I am. I am that which is creating. I don't just have creative energy moving through me that's here to support me. I am that energy itself, pure spirit in the body. That's, that's who I am. That's who I am. Awesome. So let's, let's go into these, these seven codes here. And the first one we have, the anchoring code, getting back in your body. Yeah. So it's basically showing people that they're living in their heads and that they've, they're leaving out all kinds of resources that the body is made of, different energies, the energies of wisdom, energies of personal power, mm -hmm. energies of divine love, energies of creatorship, those energies of remembering the, who we are, uh, those energies of being able to manifest, all of that happens from here down. And so if we're only living in our heads, uh, we're only tapping this analytical, rational thinking mind that's trying to collect information so that it can feel safe, so that it can be smart enough to be to have uh, respect or regard in the world. And it's it's kind of a waste of time. I mean, it it's wonderful to have that information. And you certainly, if you've been living that way, you've developed some skill sets that are going to serve you once you learn how to drop in your body. They're going to serve you in an entirely different way than you thought. 
So the mind is based on how do I stay alive? How do I, how do I be safe? How do I protect myself? And when we anchor it with the rest of who you are through the anchoring code, you start to sense and feel all these other uh, players on the team. So this, this lone star team member who we throw the ball to all the time, knowing that he's going to slam dunk it every time, uh, gets to finally feel that there are other members on this team that can, can take the heat some of the times and, and translate life completely differently uh, with the help of these other six players. Yeah. So, so let's, let's, maybe you can give us an example. Root lock, maybe one to go, whichever you feel called to. So the, um, the root lock is how we anchor ourselves in the base of our body, at the base of the spine, which mm -hmm. keeps us from floating back up and living in our heads again, like those old window shades that you pull down. Uh, you pull it down, and if you tug it just right, it'll stay. Yeah. But if the wind blows, it <laughs> right back up. So we decide to get out of our heads and to love and to find our wisdom and to go do it our own way. And as long as nobody says or does anything or the wind doesn't blow, we stay there. Uh, and, and if anybody says anything that pushes a button, <laughs> right back up in our heads again. So this root lock keeps you anchored and tethered down at the base of the spine. Just one second, let me find... Uh, this here, I have another image here. Perfect. So basically what we're talking about is, that, uh, is this anchoring at the base of the spine. There are other anchor points along the way, one yeah. at the heart level and one at the throat and in the center of your brain as well. But first things first, the anchoring code allows you to, at the tip of the spine, basically what you're doing is you're contracting the muscles in, uh, in the perineum, the base of the pelvic bowl. Simplest way to describe it is if you were going to the bathroom and you had to stop the stream instantly, you'd squeeze some muscles to do that, to get that to happen. So if you squeeze those muscles, it automatically pulls the energy field right down and anchors it where there is more kinetic energy stored and waiting for you to tap it than you can muster with your mind. It's phenomenal the amount of energy. The Eastern culture would reference this as kundalini energy. It is what rises through us that builds the circuits for us to ever wake up to the truth of who we are. Um, and so by squeezing these muscles right now, so, so it's stop the stream right yep. now, just squeeze those muscles and then relax it and then squeeze it again and squeeze it with everything you've got yep. and then relax it by one half, just about there. So now take a belly breath while you're squeezing that. It's kind of weird. Take a belly breath while you're squeezing those muscles. It's going to feel awkward and odd, and that's what we want because we want that resistance until you learn how to do that. It's going to pull your, res your awareness down into the deep, to the depths of your, your spine where your wisdom is, and as you start to focus there, it starts to breathe and activate um, your actual your wisdom center. So you're squeezing these muscles, and then you're belly breathing, and the, the two are kind of pushing against each other just a little bit. And that resistance gives the subconscious a sense of anchored presence. So you pull yourself on subject like we talked about earlier, and then you squeeze these muscles and just take a few belly breaths. And the next thing you know, what gets to happen is you get to have a sense of wisdom rising in your body. If you breathe there, and then you start to breathe from above your head down into the belly. Just make it up that there's a channel down here between your in the, in the center of your brain through the mm -hmm. center of your throat, through the center of your chest, and the th center of your belly, to the tip of your spine. Inhale, and then exhale. Shoot it down into the earth, two feet beneath where you're sitting. And then take a deep breath in through your nose, up through this mula bandha, this root lock, into the belly again. And then as you exhale it, squeeze your shoulder blades together. Roll your eyes up and feel the tension behind your eyes. And then exhale straight out the top of your head. As we do this, we start to sense and feel this central channel. And that's where we're supposed to be coming from when we live our lives, not out here in, a, in, the, in the splatted personality state uh, instead. So, so that's, that's a beginning technique. To the, it might feel awkward in this moment, but I promise you if you do that uh, several times a day, just be preoccupied with it. Uh, within two or three days, it's going to feel like, why would I ever do anything other than this? Because if you have an upset going on and you squeeze this root lock, you won't be able to be as upset as you were just seconds prior and breathing up and down through the central channel starts to anchor it and build some circuitry to sustain your awareness there. That's, that is something that I have used with people with anxiety and stress disorders and all kinds of, of uh, issues that keep them from feeling um, a sense of self. It, it changes it almost instantaneously. Thank you. And we'll go from there to uh, feel the uh, energy code number two, the feeling code, the language of the soul. Yes. So, you know, these, these practices are better described in, in more detail than we have time to do here. But what I want you to know that the feeling code is, is this. 
Every time you have an upset in your life, Mm -hmm. there is also a charge that happens in your body somewhere. There's a lump in your throat or a knot in your stomach or, or tightness in your gut. Something happens every time you get upset. And that is the body trying to tell the mind where the breath needs to be anchored and and the consciousness needs to build some circuitry the you know we we talked about that wobble of the energy that's rising through the body where there are not circuits through that toric field energy flow mm-hmm. uh, we talked about that earlier where there's a distorted field and there's a perfected field every time the energy is rising and it hits an area where we don't have circuits in place and the energy has to go around that area you feel it like a a, a knot in your stomach or t- tightness in your chest or a lump in your throat. That's how it shows up. So the feeling code is teaching you how to not only feel that and know that there is a message here, but to work with squeezing it and learning how to breathe and build the circuitry through that area so that that part of your consciousness can come forth and you can start using your wisdom that you don't have access to, or you can start experiencing your personal power that has been elusive to you, or you can start speaking your truth or having the ability by activating these energy centers and integrating them more importantly than anything into this central core flow. The feeling code teaches us how to work underneath the story of our lives and work with the raw energy of who we are. By doing so, we can make change rapidly. If we're trying to make changes in our lives through the level of the story and the issues, uh, it takes a lot longer because we have to navigate our beliefs and we have to navigate the process of how to come to terms with something. We can go straight to work with the energy, build the circuits, and the next thing you know, you feel fine. You don't even know why. Excellent, excellent. I, I like to call it pulling on the golden string. And you have one great exercise here, one eye on the inside. Yes, that is constantly walking with paying attention to uh, how do I feel in my body when I think this thought? How do I feel in my body when this person says this thing? Because if I'm having a reaction to it, I can grab it. I can anchor myself with the anchor points in my central channel. I can learn how to do this and breathe up and down and build new circuitry. If I'm constantly walking with with one eye on the inside, I I have constant access to the dashboard that's telling me how this equipment is running. The body is the dashboard. It's telling you how you're doing at learning how to master energy. And we are here to master energy in the physical dimension. We want to use all the props and the circumstances that exist here in this physical dimension to teach us how to masterfully flow that energy through our own system. Because in other dimensions, you don't have all the props. And we want to know how to manage the energy as a creator uh, regardless of our external circumstances. It's almost like we're playing a video game to get it dialed here before we go back to the, quote, real world and there is no simulation. Yes, exactly. <laughs> so let's let's go to number three, the clearing code, the healing power of the subconscious. Yes. Yeah, so what we're doing in the clearing code is teaching people how to access the, the, the subconscious beliefs that are slowing you down. There's a, there are muscle testing systems that we can use. There is feedback that the body can give us. And we're not only learning how to identify them, but it teaches you how to rearrange them, to move straight through them, to rewrite them so that you have different neurosynapses, you have different electromagnetic energy flowing around these old issues. You don't even have to know what the issues were, this is the beautiful thing, in order to find the circuits that need to be updated. So you don't ever have to remember the issues that actually are the blocks that are blocking you. So sometimes people will say, yes, I did certain work and I can, and I can now remember this thing when I was five, and, and I get it. And that, that will come, but it isn't the first thing that has to happen. When you start to train your mind to work with the raw energy, you don't have to know the story. You just have to know where is energy, is energy flowing the way it's supposed to in my body? Um, and, and I teach people how to learn to feel it mm-hmm. so that they can navigate that and everyone can do it. You don't have to have special talents and gifts to be able to do this. I love it. And, and I love that your dad talked about that nearly 100% of the time when pain or dysfunction is present in the body, there's an unresolved emotional component to that blockage of yeah. energy. Because we'll go, no, no, not me. It's this. It's literally that. But there's always more. It's always a blockage of energy flow, and the number one reason for the blockage of energy flow is unresolved emotion. And people won't think it. It can be something that, was, that happened in your life 30 years ago, 40 years ago, 
and you don't even have any memory of it. And people are, their rational mind says, how could that thing that happened in kindergarten possibly be having an effect on me as the CEO of this company in my fifties? How could that be? And it's because energy doesn't know space and time. It doesn't care. It's either flowing or it's not. And we have interrupted it and interfered with it and we've compensated and compromised and navigated it and become very skillful at getting by. But we're working 10 times, 1,000 times, 10,000 times harder than we need to be if this gunk was out of the way and the circuits were in place and the unresolved emotion and the effects of it were no longer affecting us. It, those things that we're working so hard to have accomplished, they would be accomplishing themselves automatically and we could turn our energy onto new projects instead of just trying to strive through this world. It's not supposed to be hard. <laughs> we'll go to number four. And this is a personal favorite of mine. I'm, I'm always teaching people the concept that I call the open-hearted warrior, which means leading with your heart shields down. Tell yeah. me about the heart code, the universal yeah. solvent. Yes, it's so beautiful. You know, heart is that love is the universal solvent. There's nothing that you can focus on with love that won't dissolve in your presence. And we're so used to putting up our shields and putting up our dukes and fighting our way through. And in reality, if you're anchored in the body and you understand the concepts of this and the practices of the heart code, you learn to you learn to lead with love. You learn to allow love to be the dissolvent that that uh, that interferes with obstacles that we think are in our lives, mm -hmm. and we learn to wake up to the fact that there actually are no obstacles. It's not what we thought it was. It's not as hard as we think it is. And love has to lead the way. So we have to we have to change the relationship between the heart and the head. Mm -hmm. We have to recognize that the heart is the gateway to our multidimensionality. And when you can draw from other dimensions, li literally higher frequency vibrational realities, and you can draw that energy into this one, you can, you can be masterful at managing and transmuting everything in your life into something that serves everyone. So it's not just creating a better life for you. It's creating a better life for everyone. You find a consciousness that cares because you're not in survivorship anymore. You're in creatorship and the creator truly wants everything to work for everyone. So it's not like I'll get mine and I hope you get yours. It's, it's that I, I reveal that I already have mine, which will allow you to see that you already have yours and together we will we will pool our resources for creating a world that is collaborative uh, in wholeness rather than uh, separative in survivorship. Yeah, <laughs> so from there, yeah. since we're talking about creation, we've got to go to the number five, the breath code, the power of life itself, which you refer to also as the manifesting code. Yeah. So this, this manifesting code, the, 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 uh, the, the breath code is all about how we get here. How do we complete the journey? How do we come all the way into this, this realm without being deflected and bouncing back? How do we come all the way in to the physical body again? How do we let, let ourselves land here as this loving creator? Uh, and so by a series of different ways of breathing, you're going to activate different energy centers specifically, different aspects of your own consciousness become activated. So there's a breath for your personal power. There's a breath for your creatorship. There's a breath for your deep wisdom wisdom to rise. There is a breath for a animating the heart. There is a breath for uh, uh, activating your ability as a manifester to refine your skill more easily. There's a breath, a breath pattern that allows you to activate the third eye in a safe and responsible fashion. Mm -hmm. And there's a breath that allows you to animate as the spirit that you are here in this physical dimension, uh, rather than waiting for some time in the future for your spirit to go on when you die. Uh, I'll never forget when I learned that, you know, I'm not interested in, in me dying and having my spirit go on, uh, I'm interested in being the spirit that goes on. So I better get busy identifying as that while I'm here so that when that day comes, it's a welcome transformation of me uh, rather than me being in a box the rest of you know time and in space um, uh, and, and that way living as this eternal being. And it, and it wasn't very long after that that th this big experience happened in my life. And uh, all we have to do is start to set our sights and our intentions on such and breathe our way into that, and it begins to happen. I, I want to I say that one more time, then we're going to jump into the, the, the chemistry code, because this is so important for people to hear, that to live our lives identifying as that spirit and living as the eternal being. That's, That's huge. It. 
We have to have practice doing that. That's all we have to do. And by doing so, in the same disposition, in the same quantum flip that's happening there, we heal these things that we're trying to heal. It's like we said earlier, Michael, where you know we get into this personal development and we, we start looking for what it is we need to fix, and there isn't anything broken. We just haven't accepted and perceived the wholeness of our being. The, the greatness of our, the comprehensiveness of who we are, and that is pure spirit. It's infinite possibility. It's pure light. Our, the awareness of our being that is key. So I'm teaching people how to do that and setting up the system so that you're right there, and all you have to do is surrender right into it. Once we have all the circuits in place and all the, the chemistry and the breath and the embodiment happening collectively, it, it comes together, and we unify. Beautiful. So let's go to, to number six here, the chemistry code. You call yeah. this the alchemy of embodiment. And I'm curious what pH has to do with anything. Yeah. So pH has a lot to do with, with uh, the, the chemical balance of the body. Your cells are designed to be floating in an alkaline environment. And, and we, with the thoughts that we think and most of the foods that we crave, we create an acidic environment, the opposite of what is needed for your cells to, opt, to, to optimally function. Yeah. The only cells that are, that are supposed to be in an acid environment are inside your stomach, everywhere else in your body, your joints. Uh, if not, it's arthritic, your muscles. If not, they become stiff. Your, um, your digestive system, respiratory system, immune system, hormonal system, endocrine, all of these things are designed to be floating in an alkaline environment. And the foods that we eat and the thoughts that we think will determine, are we alkaline or are we acid? So the, 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 the chemistry code talks about how you determine that, how you weigh it out, how you test for it to see with litmus paper, uh, the saliva, urine test. You can find out where your chemistries are so that you can see what are my chances of self-healing? What are my op what are what are the chances that that I'm going to be able to awaken to a higher level of consciousness? Is my body cooperating with my ability to do that? Because the, we came here and we took a body. We came to the physical dimension for a reason. The body is playing a huge role in our ability to wake up to the truth of who we are uh, while we're here. So the chemistry code uh, talks about the third eye. It talks about the, the third ventricle in the brain, but it does so in a user-friendly way. So it don't get scared if you're not into the science and that kind of thing, but it's there if you're interested. I talk about it, and then I make it super accessible for people because what matters is that we get this, right? So it talks about the pineal gland and, and the pituitary and the relationship there between what's going on in our inner world and what's going on in our upper world what's going on in our active outer world, and how do we bring all that together in a way that allows us to operate in a masterful fashion. So the chemistry code is all about how to do that. Beautiful. And since we're talking about masterful, we'll go into the, the last but not least, the spirit code where the many become one. And, and I'm sorry, Sue, I'm just not very spiritual. Yeah. <laughs> Love that statement. Uh, you're made of spirit. That's it. You know, so no getting around it. You don't have to, um, you don't have to wear certain clothes or light candles in any certain fashion or have any particular rituals in order to be spiritual. All you have to do is recognize that the truth of you is that you are made of high frequency energy, the highest that is, and you've compressed yourself here into the physical dimension so that you could navigate and participate in the expansion of consciousness. That's why we come here. We're made of everything. We don't need anything. We come here as the solution, not the problem. We come here as the solution. We come into this dense world because we're bringing the light of consciousness that we are into it. And the best way to do that is to use the catalyst of love that we've been speaking about. And to learn how to do that, we have to learn how to navigate these energies simultaneously. It's not that hard. It's actually much easier than how we were navigating the world before. Uh, it's just that no one ever showed us. No one ever showed us how to do all the things at the right time at the same time mm -hmm. to have the outcome that we're looking for. So everyone is spiritual. Can, can you tell us about, real briefly, about the practice of walking in nature using the central channel breathing? Yes. So this central channel, what we were just talking about, breathing from above your head, down through the center of the brain, the center of the throat, the center of the chest, center of the belly, center of the abdomen, tip of the spine, into the earth. There is this central channel uh, that is constantly flowing, and we can we can say say that that it's from above the head right down through the body and into the earth, just like that toric field image that we were showing before with the distortion in the field or not. Uh, there's a central channel through there. So when you breathe from above your head into your core and then exhale to beyond your body, 
and then inhale from the, in the earth beyond your body up into the core and then exhale at the top of your head and then inhale again from a, above your head into the core channel if you inhale and exhale into the earth. That's a central channel breath. When you walk in nature and you breathe that way, you watch what happens. You watch what happens. You'll start to resonate with the trees. You're going to start to see the lakes and the mountains and the stream or whatever it is that's around you very differently. You're going to, you're going to identify and resonate in a coherent fashion with them in such a fashion that you will wonder why you ever um, imagine that you are separate from such an amazing thing. You are not in nature. You are nature participating as Ooh. such. Woohoo! <laughs> About 10 years ago, we, my wife and I wrote the bestseller, uh, Barefoot Running. We wrote Barefoot Walking, and we did exercises like this by helping people connect to the earth. First, we said you went from a 3D to a high-def world, and, and yes. then you went from seeing the scenery to becoming the scenery. Being the scenery. You bet. That's it. I love it. So before we, we do some wrap-up questions, we'll dive into a meditation. What does it mean to make a front-side impact on the world? Operating from the front side of the model is something I discuss in the book about the model of consciousness where we're either victimized on the back side of the model, waiting for the world to show us how we're supposed to react and respond, or etc. And we work our way to the front side of the model through that quantum flip. We flip into our creatorship. It's to know, to make an impact on the world from the front side of the model is to live as though you're the one that is generating all of it, that you don't see other people as your problem, mm -hmm. that you see other people as parts of your consciousness that you're trying to integrate and that you embrace it and you learn from it and you live from it and you are in, you are interested in why do I have a charge here? It's the charge is about me. I'm here to use my entire life experience to refine my ability to not interfere with the nature spirit being that I am and allow it to be true. And when I action from that place, I'm an alpha thinker. I'm proactive. I'm yeah. the one that's generating new ideas. I'm coming up with new projects instead of and complaining about the old projects that are in place already. And so we're, we're moving and trusting the gut and allowing wisdom to rise and allowing it to come out of our mouths and to, to come into our actions that we take uh, based upon love and based upon possibility. And as we train our minds to do this, the mind becomes relieved. Uh, we can train the mind to do that just like we trained the mind to protect us. And it is, it is a new day. And we are ready for this. And it is time for us to take this responsible stewardship into action and to live it and breathe it as, and, and here's the interesting thing, Michael, when people begin to do this, they report back to me that actually what they are becoming is the one that they always thought was possible. They're becoming the one that they always dreamed of as a kid, who they thought they were early on when they were the superheroes with their pretend capes and their, you know, their whatevers and their magic wands, that they actually feel that rejuvenated inside because they're allowing that imagination that got kicked under the bus when we were about four years old to come back out and to be the creative force on the planet that we need. It's what we're seeking. And so making a difference in the world from that front side of the model is simply allowing you to dream, allowing you to not just dream them, but step into those dreams and take action on them by building the circuits to make it seem plausible to do. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. My wife, Jessica, she's the producer. She always wants me to ask a, a question for parents and kids. And you just mentioned kids. It's interesting because you saw things and felt things and you had glowing golden hands and you're looking at tadpoles in the water until a certain age. And then it was snuffed out. What yeah. advice would you give parents to help their kids stay in this place that we're going to work yeah. to get back to? Yeah. I would never say that's just your imagination. I would always encourage them to utilize their imagination and keep it alive mm -hmm. and route it into creative manners, route it into productive fashion, because that, that's what we're here to do. We're here to hone our imagination. Think about it. A creator is imagining things and creating them. Yeah. You know, we come up with stuff and we just make it happen. We, an inventor invents stuff by using their imagination. And so, so always encourage their imagination, ask them to tell you all the details about it, and then share with them about the world that they're living in and how they're here to bring that imagination in to come up with new ideas uh, and encouragement. That is profoundly important when we, we, if we don't want to snuff it out any more than it has to by design of coming here. You know, we come here to awaken to our creatorship. So of course, part of that density has to be filtered, you know, through, has to be navigated through, but by encouraging them to trust themselves and to trust their heart and to, and to lead with love and to stand their ground and to always speak their truth and to feel in their bodies. 
the one thing that I would say to enhance their ability to stay confident about who they are and what they can dream of is to stay anchored in their bodies and to feel what they're feeling and to trust their gut. There are billions of bits of information that are bombarding our gut every millisecond. They don't arrive at our head, they arrive at our gut. And we're building a super highway from the gut up here so that we can perceive that cosmic wisdom. We want them to stay in touch with that and not splat quite like we did. Awesome, awesome, awesome. So where can people go to find out more, to find your absolutely beautiful book, The Energy Codes, and to keep from going splat? <laughs> keep from going splat. DrSueMorter.com, mm -hmm. uh, D-R-S-U-E-M-O-R-T-E-R.com. And uh, they can find what they need there. They can find the book. They can find uh, additional meditations and things that I gift them uh, if they're purchasing the book through our website. Or they can also get the book on Amazon, of course, uh, and Barnes and & Noble online and Books a Million online and those regular resources. Fantastic. So if you didn't catch DrSueMorder.com, come on over to InspireNationShow.com. We'll get you over to DrSueMorder.com. Before we dive into a brief meditation, would you have any last words of wisdom that you want to share with people? Yeah, I just like to remind everyone that there's nothing broken. There's nothing wrong. There is nothing missing. You are absolutely the creator in a body. You are here as that creative force uh, bringing your light into this dense physical dimension. And you're made for this. It's not harder than you. It's not bigger than you. There is only an amazing life to be lived. And it's just time to let that happen. Woohoo! Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Thank you so much. Mm, Would you mind leading us, if people aren't driving down the road, if not, do it later when you can pull the car to the side. Would you mind leading us in a meditation then? I'm sure I'd be happy to. So if we can just uh, take a deep belly breath in as we've, been, as we've been speaking about. Just breathe in your belly. And the bigger the belly breath, the better. And if you can slow that down. As we've been talking very fast and learning a lot and remembering a bunch activating so much through the transmission that's been happening through the conversation now we're going to drop in and let it soak in so we're breathing in the belly and just gently squeeze this root lock just ever so slightly and gently squeeze your shoulder blades toward each other for just a moment and then roll your eyes up and slightly together and feel the tension behind your eyes for this activates a channel down through the core of your body and we're going to take a breath from the earth up into the belly, up into the heart. Let it feel good. And we're going to roll the eyes upward and exhale up through the throat and up the big white space behind the eyes and exhale out the crown and allow this breath to go two feet above your head and four feet above your head. And now a deep breath in from overhead and breathe right back down into this big white space behind the eyes, into the throat, and squeeze your throat just a little that you can feel and hear your breath. Breathe into the chest and into the belly, big belly breath, and let it feel good. And then exhale down through this root lock into the earth, two feet beneath where you sit. And as we sit here in this place, breathe up from the earth into the belly, into the heart space, and into the chest. Inhale bigger than the body in a big spherical fashion and exhale in every direction. In front of you, behind you, to the left, to the right, above and below. And now inhale from every direction into your belly into your solar plexus, into your upper lobes of your lungs now, and inhale bigger than the body, big sphere, bigger than the body, and exhale in every direction, in front of you, behind you, left, right, above, below, golden white light, inhale that white light back into the belly and into the solar plexus and into the heart space. Let's sit here for just a moment and breathe in and exhale in a spherical fashion again and inhale and exhale out in every direction and in this enlarging 
sphere. Bigger and bigger. Just let go and allow yourself to become part of the unified field. The thinking mind lets go. The effort in the body releases. And we simply allow the grace of this divine presence that is always here underneath everything to become the focus of your attention that you might even allow yourself to become this presence of white light pure presence and release into that for just a moment of silence and begin to breathe in the belly with awareness I am I am breath I am light breathing Manage to allow yourself to become a funnel of light, a channel of light that pours yourself into what would be from overhead into the top of the brain, illuminating the right brain, your creative essence, knowing the truth of all that is, unity, interconnectedness, pouring yourself into the left brain, knowing that my thoughts are based in light and that the structures of my life are based in energy. Allow the left brain to be illuminated, right brain to be illuminated, corpus callosum, bridging the two worlds to be white light. Let this feminine quality that merges the masculine and the feminine be unifying one brain, big white space in the brain. Allow this white light to become liquid light, pouring itself down through the primitive brain. Let my reactions and tendencies become based in grace, based in knowing that all is well, based in revealing that I am creative force on the planet. As this liquid lighted love that I am makes its way into the throat, into my manifesting energies that I bring myself wholly, fully here, and I drop more fully still into the heart space. And in this heart, I become infused in the vibrational frequency manifesting as love here. Now, liquid lighted love, I pour myself more fully into the solar plexus where my mind is nurtured. The mind field represented here at the solar plexus becomes golden white light. Golden white liquid lighted love I am pouring down more deeply still into the body, into the belly where the wisdom nurtures and my inherited genetic code becomes infused with the liquid lighted golden presence of love that I am altering, perfecting, transmuting distortions into perfection by being wholly, fully present as creator. I can, I am. As I drop more deeply still into the tip of the spine, to the hips and the legs and the feet and my rootedness all the way to the center of Mother Earth, I plant myself here as creator. I breathe in unison with the love of the mother we call Mother Nature, and I breathe up from the center of her heart through my rootedness, into my belly, into my solar plexus, into my heart space again. And I squeeze that root lock ever so gently now and my shoulder blades together again as I breathe from this heart and I exhale up through the throat, rolling my eyes that I might feel the tension behind my eyes, that I might direct my attention specifically to the center of my brain, 
as I exhale into the center of the brain, illuminating the cerebrospinal fluid with the truth of who I am, carrying nutrients to the brain, spinal cord, infusing this information into my cells, organs, glands, muscles, that I am a being of light. I am being human, masquerading as a human being. I am simply here as light, being human. A deep breath in and exhale a tone, a sound of mmm. And a deep breath in again from overhead. Center of the brain, center of the heart, squeeze the blades into the belly. Deep breath. Let it feel good and exhale. And one last deep breath in. And exhale. Slowly begin to move your fingers and roll your wrists and slowly begin to quicken at the neck and roll your neck around. Just gently roll one shoulder and then the other and twist your body to the right. Take the chin over your right shoulder and squeeze that root lock again and big belly breath. And rotate your body all the way around to the left. Rotate, twist the spine to the left and squeeze that root lock and take a deep breath in and let it feel good. As we come back into the room and gently open your eyes, knowing yourself to be the creative presence on the planet, bringing light as love into everything that you see as you gently open your eyes knowing yourself to be the truth of who you are. I am. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Thank you so much, Sue. This Mm. has been phenomenal. This has been beautiful. Thank you, thank you, thank you. My great joy. Thank you so much for what you're doing and bringing these conversations to the world. It's very, very important that everyone be able to connect with what matters most. I couldn't agree more. Couldn't agree more. Got to crank it back up for the finish here. I'm in la-la land. So (laughs) for everyone out there, this is Michael Sandler saying be well, have fun, get the energy codes, and begin awakening your spirit today and shine bright. (laughs) Woohoo! Bye-bye, everyone. Wow, wow, wow. What another amazing, sacred, special interview. On that note, if you want to dive into something that's sacred and special, and you want to dive into awe, the automatic writing experience. It's a process where you learn how to channel, to go quiet, put pen to paper, and literally get answers from the other side of the veil. Now you can get our video-based program where you can begin learning automatic writing today, along with live classes at automaticwriting.com. On that note, if you're loving the show, then that means you are a mystic. So join Michael School of Mystics. We meet four Wednesdays a month. Simply go to inspirenationuniversity.com and you can find Michael School of Mystics. On that note, come join us every Monday night. We have YouTube live events. And if you want even more than that, click the join link. Come join the inner circle with me. You get an uplifting dose of goodness in the inner circle with all of the behind the scenes footage and videos that I make specifically for you. We're a podcast too. Find us on iTunes, Spotify, every single place you can get a podcast. You can find the Inspire Nation show. Click the subscribe button and the bell icon, which will notify you with upcoming shows, YouTube live premieres. And here's the link to the next amazing video. Love you guys so, so much. Big thumbs up. Leave your comments if you like this. Shine bright. Woohoo! Love you guys.